Hey, Scott here, Scotty's Animals. I got my glasses on, because today we're gonna have a little class about guinea pigs and heart disease. So heart disease is extremely common in guinea pigs, and it may be one of the leading illnesses that you see in guinea pigs, and it may actually be one of the most common set of symptoms that we see with guinea pigs. Unfortunately, heart disease and respiratory illness or other issues like scurvy, they all seem to have similar symptoms. And not only that, but sometimes these can overlap. And what do I mean by that? Well, not only does a respiratory infection and some of the symptoms of heart disease look very similar, but in fact, you can actually have both at the same time. It's not uncommon that guinea pigs will develop heart disease uh, at a certain point in their life, but also have a respiratory infection. And it's also common that guinea pigs with heart disease are more susceptible to a respiratory infection. The same actually goes for scurvy. Scurvy is a lack of or a uh, deficiency in vitamin C. Some of the symptoms of scurvy, like lethargy, which is being lethargic, not moving around that often, are also symptoms of heart disease because when you're not feeling well, you don't move around. And when you have heart issues, then you're less likely to be moving around. So this video, we're gonna talk about a lot of the common uh, symptoms of heart disease and I have why I've got my glasses on I have a write-up from the exotic animal veterinary center in Pasadena and so they have a information sheet about heart disease so we're gonna go through that we're gonna talk about that and I got my glasses on to make sure that I'm able to read all of this information and I'll actually put some of that information up here on the screen so let's talk about heart disease. Let's talk about some of the other illnesses that mimic heart disease or that go hand in hand with heart disease. So first off, if you suspect heart disease, and we'll talk about those symptoms in a second, you will go to the vet and the vet is going to use a lot of their tools and their uh, instruments to look for symptoms of heart disease. The vet is going to listen to the heart the vet is going to listen for sounds of irregular heartbeat or problems with the sounds of the beating of the heart. And then they're going to look at your piggy and they're going to look and see if there's possible circulation problems. So if your piggy has circulation problems, they might be pale. So their feet might be pale or their nose or around their face, there might, might be uh, pale and less flushed because of blood circulation. If your piggy has uh, frayed ears and it's not because of fighting, then they, they say that uh, it's necrotic, meaning that there's not enough blood circulation and those parts of, of the, the ends, the tips of their ears is actually dying, rotting away on their ears. So that's a sign of heart disease as well. But we'll get into all those symptoms here in a second. Diagnostics can help the vet determine whether or not there's heart disease, but they'll only do an x-ray or a radiograph if needed. Normally the vet will actually go ahead and treat based on the symptoms rather than using an x-ray. You might be noticing my t-shirt right now because uh, at a certain point, Gary did have some breathing issues and I've been pretty familiar with guinea pig heart disease and I was worried that Gary had heart issues. So I took Gary in and he got an x-ray, which you can actually see this actually is Gary's x-ray. And the x-ray was sort of inconclusive. Then Gary had a radiograph, I believe that's the same as a sonogram, and it also was somewhat inconclusive about determining heart disease. We were able to see that he had 
uh, good lung function and that his heart was not enlarged, but that's why they will normally treat symptoms rather than trying to prove heart disease based on just diagnostic testing alone. It was determined that probably what was going on with Gary was more uh, pneumonia and we were able to see small amounts of scarring in the lungs that could have been a, a respiratory infection that turned into pneumonia. But anyways, he was treated with antibiotics and just he was able to heal and the vet said that over time, whatever lung scarring we were able to see and that was present would probably heal itself. Anyways, uh, after a certain amount of treatment, his, uh, his sounds, his breathing issues, they went away. And, and now I, I'm happy to report that he is healthy and he's happy and he's, he's doing great. But I made this t-shirt to uh, commemorate the situation to uh, also to try to recoup some of the funds for all of those uh, x-rays and and all of that and after that I was able to put him and all of my piggies on pet health insurance but this was before I got that all initiated and I can tell you that the nationwide pet insurance really does help I have a, a video about nationwide pet insurance so I'll put that here um, Every year the rates change a little bit, so you're going to want to call them and talk to them about the different levels of coverage that they have available this year. So let's continue. Let's talk about the signs and symptoms of heart disease. Now I'll put these symptoms and signs right up here and we can talk about them. I really do recommend the exotic animal care center in Pasadena, but of course you might not be in California, you might not even be in the United States, but it is important that you have a vet that is familiar with guinea pigs and heart disease. On my website, Scotty's Animals, I have a list of guinea pig savvy vets. Now I can't say that they're all going to be as good or as knowledgeable as the vets at the Exotic Animal Care Center in Pasadena, but I will include a link to this information sheet as well as in general the Exotic Animal Care Center and you might be able to refer your vet to some of that information so that they can get up to speed as well as all of us in the guinea pig community. So let's go through these signs and symptoms of heart disease in guinea pigs. So some of these signs and symptoms may appear every day or they may just appear occasionally, but it's just like with a respiratory infection or any kind of an illness, like with sneezing. If you hear your guinea pig sneeze, guinea pigs should not be sneezing. Now I do also, side note, have an illness page with common illnesses and a bunch of videos about some of the different common illnesses on my free guinea pig care guide on my website. But the point is, if you hear any symptoms of illness, then you really need to pay attention. And if you continue to hear those for multiple days, that is something that need, needs to be addressed by a vet and you need to take very seriously. Guinea pigs tend to hide their illness. And by the time you've seen their illness happening, then they probably have been sick for a while. So let's talk about these signs and symptoms of heart disease. I'm just going to look at my cheat sheet right here. So <laughs> we've got labored breathing, coughing or wheezing or rattling because of fluid in the lungs. So that's going to sound like kind of a, a, a crinkling sound. Now that's not to be confused with a hooting sound. You might hear your guinea pig breathe. And on this sheet, it says sounds like a dove or an owl. And what that sounds is kind of like... <gasps> And that is a struggling to breathe, usually because the heart is enlarged and it's pushing on the lungs and it's very uncomfortable. Also, as I mentioned before, a chronic respiratory infection might be signs of heart disease. And so a respiratory infection you would normally treat with antibiotics, but it's important that you go to the vet and that they can check for other issues like heart disease if you suspect a respiratory infection. 
So if your piggy has change in behavior, they're not as active as they normally are. They're not coming up to you for treats. You really want to go to the vet and you really want to get them to check your piggy out completely and figure out what is at the bottom, what is the cause of, of these symptoms. Another symptom is loss of appetite or weight loss. And it's really important to weigh your piggies frequently especially if you suspect illness, but it's not that bad of an idea to weigh your piggies once a month or once a week, and especially if they're older or if they are prone to illness. But you get a kitchen scale, you get one of these little digital scales. I like to, you can get a, a kitchen scale that's even smaller than your piggies, and you just put them in a little plastic tub and you balance it on the scale, and then that way, you can check out the weight of your piggies and you don't need a gigantic scale that they can fit on. There's plenty of ways to make a regular small scale work as long as it can weigh up to three or four pounds or, you know, five pounds for the biggest piggies. But basically, you know, 100 and, uh, 1,500, 1,600 grams, that's probably going to be the maximum of most guinea pigs. Let's keep going with the symptoms malocclusion from not being able to eat hay properly. So that is like if the teeth are overgrown, the back teeth or the front teeth, if the teeth start to overgrow, it could be appetite related, which could be because of heart issues. So all of these, you can see how, I mean, it's just like with people and it's just like a, a system where if one thing is off, it can throw everything off. So, uh, these symptoms are interrelated and everything with the body connects. So an x-ray may show an enlarged heart and that is a symptom of heart disease. So here's what we were talking about before. The ear margins may become necrotic from poor circulation and that is just the tips of their ears might seem to be fraying and if you peel or if you you know go like this parts of the ear might crumble off where like the skin, the edges of the ear seem dry and frayed. Not like they have been bitten, but like they're just really rotting away. And also another symptom listed here is that the mucous membranes are bluish or pale. And I looked at what mucous membranes are and they're basically talking about the nose or the mouth or, you know, just other areas of uh, poor circulation. Another symptom listed here is difficulty of coming around after being put under anesthesia. So if your piggy doesn't seem to wake up as easily after being put to sleep for a, a surgery, then that might be a sign of heart disease. But let's flip that around. If your piggy has heart disease, then they might not be a good candidate for surgery because that, that would mean that it would be more difficult for them to wake up from anesthesia and that, that they would be a poor candidate for anesthesia. So that's a, a risky thing, like an older guinea pig with heart disease, you wouldn't want to neuter them or if they had stone issues, that might be a, a greater threat uh, to surgery. So, of course, like I said, all these things seem to go together and these are issues that you need to really consider talk with your vet about. Luckily, and I want to mention this before we even continue these symptoms, is heart disease in guinea pigs with the proper uh, medication, normally it's daily medication, can improve their lives, improve their heart function, and guinea pigs with heart disease can actually live a full and normal life. In fact, I have two guinea pigs right now that are on heart medicine. Nails is on heart medicine, and so is Billy. And Nails was showing signs and symptoms of heart disease even after he was only uh, about a year and a half to two years old. But I can tell you that obviously if you look at him, he's a big piggy, he eats very well, and he is doing wonderful. But if he doesn't have his heart medicine, and if it's not consistent, his symptoms, trouble breathing, labored breathing, actually will come back. So it is really important that I am constantly uh, diligent and giving him his 
medicine on a daily and really twice daily basis. Very important. So let's continue with the symptoms. Uh, here we have deep sleeping, easy to pick up. If your piggies are, you can just pick them up, scoop them up, and you know that might be a sign that you've followed my taming guide and that you've tamed them, but it also might just be a sign that they're having heart issues, that they're not feeling well, and that's why, remember, guinea pigs are prey animals, so they, no matter how much they trust you, unless you're dangling lettuce in front of them, they'd rather run away from you, run in their igloo, because they're so much happier in their safe space than they are, you know, snuggled with you. I hate to break it to you, but they're just using us for veggies. <laughs> That's just the way it is, and they would prefer to be in their home, in their burrow, in their little hidey, you know, unless you've really tamed them to come out and accept treats, you know, or you've got a cuddle sack or a cuddle cup. Now check out my taming playlist right here, and you will really be on your path to taming them, but one of the signs of heart disease is that they're a little bit too easy to pick up, so... If your piggy runs away from you when you're trying to grab them, that actually is a sign that they're normal and that they're happy and they're healthy. It's not that they hate you. It's just that they're guinea pigs. They're prey animals. They'd rather be in their cage. That's just the way it is. So as I mentioned, having poor circulation and having bluish mucous membranes is a sign of heart disease. So is pale hind feet or if they have bright red feet. So you want their feet to be pink. Uh, and now some piggies obviously have different skin colors. There's some piggies with uh, you know, black feet and black skin and, and all different colors. And that's the beauty of guinea pigs. And, but in general, uh, if your piggy ha has uh, palish skin, you know, that is one of the signs uh, of heart disease. So if their skin is too pale for their uh, pinkish skin color. But of course, like I said, if you've got piggies with different skin colors, it, this is not going to be a symptom that you're going to be able to spot. But if, you can, if your piggies have dark feet, then maybe you want to look at their ears, look at their nose. If they're dark all over, then, you know, not luckily, but there are, as you can see, a huge list of these uh, symptoms. So another symptom about the feet would be bumblefoot. If they had chronic bumblefoot, that might be an indication of heart disease. And I do have a video also about bumblefoot. I think I've got another card that we can put here. So check out my bumblefoot series with Ron and, uh, and that could be a symptom also of heart issues. So crusty eyes, if your guinea pigs have crusty eyes, then that might be uh, another symptom of heart disease. It's also a symptom of respiratory illness. And as we have said repeatedly, all these things seem to go together. And another symptom that's also respiratory infection as well as heart disease would be nasal just discharge. If you, your piggy has a runny nose then and crusty or runny eyes, then it it might be a respiratory infection, but it might also be heart disease. And because all of these symptoms seem to overlap, it's very crucial that you go to the vet and check out, get your piggy looked at for both of these illnesses. The next symptom listed here is called PI. Now PI is when your piggy's eyes are sort of uh, droopy and you can see the, the, the fatty, kind of inner part of the eye. Now, most cases, or in many cases, it's it alone is not a problem, but it is a symptom of possible heart disease. But PI in of itself is not a health issue or it's not a, a problem. Some piggies just get it, but it could be, along with these other symptoms, a sign of heart issues. But my guinea pig Cheech, who was only about a year old, started to develop PI. And as far as I know, he did not have any heart issues. He did not show any of these other signs. Some piggies just have it. 
According to the Exotic Animal Vet Center in Pasadena, scurvy is not only a major contributing factor to heart disease, but also other illnesses like arthritis. Now, vitamin C is extremely important for the health and well-being of guinea pigs. And just like people, we don't make it ourselves, and it's something that must be supplemented with our diet. Now, I don't know about you, but I take a multivitamin every day to make sure that I can get adequate vitamins that may or may not be present in my diet. So it's the same for guinea pigs. This is kind of a debate in the guinea pig world. Uh, a lot of people think that they can get plenty of vitamin C through their diet and through the pellets. But with guinea pigs, you know, you can't guarantee how many pellets they're going to eat during a day and exactly what the vitamin C content is of the veggies that you're eating. Okay, I guess everyone's going to be drinking water right now, especially Nate. Nate and Popeye back here. Okay guys, drink your water. And Billy's over here drinking water too. And that reminds me, if you're gonna do vitamin C, we prefer either the liquid vitamin C or the vitamin C cookies and you don't put it in the water. You wanna make sure that you're giving them fresh, clean water because just like you can't guarantee how much vitamin C they're gonna get from their pellets or from their veggies, you can't guarantee how much vitamin C you're gonna, they're gonna get from drinking because you can't control how much they drink during the day. And you don't want to put all this expensive vitamin C into the water because it will change the flavor of the water and then also, you want to clean and change that water every day. So if there's a little bit of water at the bottom and it's gotten stale and gross and there's pellet backwash and whatever, or maybe your water bottle has been exposed to sunlight and it's starting to grow some algae or funk in there, if you've put expensive vitamin C supplements in there, you're gonna be less likely to want to clean out that water bottle and dump that expensive vitamin C out. And also, it's just much easier and much more guaranteed. You give them a vitamin C cookie or you give them the Child Life Liquid Vitamin C and then you know that they're getting the exact amount of vitamin C that they need. And for an adult guinea pig, that is 50 milligrams of vitamin C per day. Babies, you can do half, but that equals one milliliter of the Child Life Liquid Vitamin C. So one milliliter syringe is 50 milligrams of vitamin C and it will say on the label how much you're getting per whatever dosage uh, and so you can do the math there to figure out what it is but it's 50 milligrams of vitamin C per one milliliter of liquid. If your piggies are having trouble eating that the liquid vitamin C is preferable to the vitamin C cookie and it also says that Guinea pigs, if they're not given adequate vitamin C, can develop scurvy in 60 to 90 days. So that's three months. If they're having issues of eating for three months, they can develop scurvy, and sometimes it can be even quicker than that. But we have seen piggies with all sorts of issues really turn around when they get consistent vitamin C. But giving your piggies vitamin C is definitely not a substitute for going to the vet, especially if you uh, are concerned about uh, symptoms that might indicate heart disease or respiratory illness or any illness, you've got to go to the vet. Just giving them liquid vitamin C is not going to cure them of any disease, but it can really go a long way to boosting the immune system and keeping them healthy, but definitely not a substitute for heart disease medication or proper diagnosis from a vet. Now I mentioned I've got a vet list of vets from all over the country and all over the world and check it out and you'll probably find one in your area or nearby. And don't be shy, don't be afraid of driving an hour to save your guinea pig's life. Another thing to note about supplementation with vitamin C like I said, I take a multivitamin and I still also like to eat oranges and peppers and things that are uh, high in vitamin C and other vitamins, but vitamin C is a water soluble vitamin. And what that means is if you uh, have more vitamin C than you need, it's something that your body will just flush out. So just like us guinea pigs, 
if they get too much vitamin C, their body will just flush it out. They will urinate out the extra vitamin C that their body doesn't need. So that's not something that you really need to worry about. It's more important that your guinea pigs are getting adequate vitamin C. And if they get more than they need, their body will just expel what they don't need in their urine and everything will be fine. So don't worry about that. It's much more important that they get adequate amounts. Now let's talk about medicine that can be useful in the treatment of congestive heart failure or heart disease. There are a number of medications that your vet can prescribe which will eliminate these symptoms of heart disease and help your guinea pig's heart to uh, return to a normal functioning and can actually give them a full, long, normal life. So one of the most common and most important medicines in your arsenal is going to be benazapril, or also known as lotensin, that's the uh, drug name, but it's benazapril, and so it says here it is an ACE or ACE inhibitor used to treat heart failure. So it is a compounded uh, solution, which means that they have to mix it up and that's how you'll get it at a compounding pharmacy. Check with your vet to see whether what the correct dosage should be for your piggy. Don't just you know get this out of a van somewhere. This should be prescribed by your vet and you wanna to stick to the amount that's been prescribed. Like I said, I will put a link to this information sheet down in the description, as well as a link to the Child Life Liquid Vitamin C and the Vitamin C cookies. So also uh, a medication called furosemide, or as we also call it, the brand name is called Lasix, and that is a liquid that is a diuretic and that can help remove the or manage the fluid buildup in the lungs. So another medication that is common for treating heart disease is called Vetmedin. Now that is a pill that you would crush up and mix with water, and that is normally used if there is a heart murmur. So the last medication that the Exotic Animal Vet Center in Pasadena is mentioning for heart disease is actually a common antibiotic called Batril. The reason why Batril is mentioned is not just that guinea pigs will either have a respiratory infection or heart disease, but a lot of times they have heart disease and a respiratory infection because uh, one and the other are related and that if they have heart disease, they may also, that may also cause a, a respiratory infection or other infection. So the vet will prescribe the Batril and that will actually help them get better faster because it might eliminate any uh, underlying infection in the lungs that they may have in addition to heart disease. Now, most guinea pig savvy vets will prescribe a probiotic along with an antibiotic, but I've heard a lot of examples where this has not been done. And I just wanna mention right now, there's a product called Benabac, which is a beneficial bacteria paste. You can find it in many pet stores. You can find it online and you can find it on my free guinea pig care guide on my website, Scotty's Animals. But I'll also put a link down here in the description for a uh, Benabac probiotic. It's just a paste that you would give them and it can really help the digestion because antibiotics can very frequently disrupt the digestion by killing the gut bacteria that your guinea pig may have. It is also important that you don't give uh, an antibiotic and a probiotic at the same time because they have a tendency to counteract each other. So you would want to give the probiotic a few hours before or after the antibiotic and you just want to make sure that you're not giving them at the same time but that you stagger those doses. So the very last thing that the information sheet about heart disease has is uh, a list of scurvy symptoms because they are similar to heart disease but also remember like we said like it says here earlier is that scurvy is 
one of the major contributing factors to heart disease. If your guinea pig develops scurvy, then it could cause heart disease. So here is a list of symptoms and signs of scurvy. Tiredness, loss of appetite, irritability, inability to gain weight, muscle weakness, joint and muscle aches and stiffness, bulging eyeballs, eventual death due to cardiac failure, diarrhea, lethargy, slow wound healing, anemia, depression, unusual paleness, or fever. And you can see that some of those symptoms are related to heart disease and also respiratory infection, because as we've said numerous times, a lot of these illnesses go hand in hand and seem to overlap. So if you if your guinea pig is experiencing any of these symptoms and you see any of these symptoms, especially uh, a loss of appetite or they're just not as active as they have been, that is a big indication. Don't just think, oh, my guinea pig's in a bad mood. My guinea pig's acting shy today. That's why it's really important to get on that taming. If you are teaching your piggies that you are the bringer of treats and normally they come running to you, but then today they don't come running to you, your spidey sense should be tingling. That is a big sign that something is wrong. It's really important that you are teaching your piggies that you are the bringer of treats. That means that when you're preparing your veggies, you're weaking and whistling out in the other room maybe, and that when you come in, you know, you're crinkling the bag or you're showing them the treats and you wanna get them used to coming up and taking those treats. So, if your piggy does not come up and take the treats, but normally they do, or they're just showing signs of low energy, then that is a symptom that something is wrong. So you really want to pay attention to that. And if after a day or so, they don't uh, go back to normal, then you really, you need to make an appointment with a vet. You really don't want to delay because you might find that a vet appointment is hard to get and emergency vet appointments are also much more expensive than a regular appointment and you really don't want to wait. If your guinea pig is showing signs of illness, you don't want to wait three, four days until you can get an appointment at the vet. You really need to go right away because getting your piggies on the path to wellness, whether that means you know, investigating, because sometimes it takes a while to figure out what it is. So if you need to do a course of antibiotics before you're even going to go down the, the road of heart disease, your guinea pig could be quite uncomfortable for a long period of time. Usually, luckily, heart disease is not something that your piggy's going to die from right away, but it is something that causes serious discomfort. And especially even in young piggies, why would you want them to suffer longer than, you know, you don't want them to suffer at all. And so the sooner you can get them on a path to recovery where they're feeling better and they're enjoying life and feeling good, that's really where we want to be. So don't delay, make sure that you in fact, I would encourage you right now to go on my website and check and try to find a vet in your area. And if there isn't one in your area uh, on my list, then really do a good Google search, do, a, uh, do your research, try to find a vet, call them and find out if they are comfortable treating piggies. Now, if you live in a rural area or you live someplace where your vets are limited, you might have to point them to an info sheet like this or to some other resources and they're just going to be the ones that are able to help you by prescribing these medications but you can do your research you can help them and together you guys can end up you know learning more about piggies than you normally would but if you can find a vet that is in your area that's on my list all of these vets on my list have been recommended to me by viewers like you that have had positive experiences with them. I didn't just do a Google search and try to find, you know, vets that say that they are good with guinea pigs or that say that they take care of guinea pigs or will see them. These are actually vets that have been recommended by you, by my viewers. So 
take that into consideration and make sure that you've got a vet ready to go. There's no reason why you couldn't have a list of several vets from different offices, you know, near you where you can go in case of an emergency because it's pretty frequent that your main vet might be booked up for the next couple days, but there's another vet nearby that can see them. So having a, a couple different vets that you trust, that you, that you know well, that you have a rapport with, that is really important. So I hope you'll use these resources. I hope you'll uh, check the links in the description that you'll start building your emergency kit. So that means having vitamin C. I would encourage that if your piggy, if you think that it's important. Now at the LA Guinea Pig Rescue, we don't say that all guinea pigs need vitamin C every day. But if you asked uh, the Exotic Animal Vet Center, they would say for sure, all piggies should have 50 mil milligrams of vitamin C every day. Now, like I said, I take a multivitamin every day. And if you cared about your health, you probably would too, or you'd make sure that you're eating your veggies. Now, that's just the problem with our food is we just can't guarantee exactly how much vitamins we get in and that's why we take an extra multivitamin to cover our bases. So that is the logic behind giving your piggies the one milliliter, the 50 milligrams of vitamin C every day is that you know that they're getting it. So I highly recommend doing that and it definitely couldn't hurt because they'll just pee out the extra amount. It will be a treat for them. The liquid vitamin C is amazing. Most guinea pigs really love it. There's a few guinea pigs out there that at first they're like, well, ah, it's, it tastes too sour for them. But I'm looking at you, Petunia. But after they have it a few times, even Gary, he didn't like the vitamin C at first. And now he loves it. He goes crazy for it. He'll steal the syringe. And, and even when it's the vitamin C is gone, he'll be chewing on the syringe. They really will learn to love it. And then they won't be afraid of the syringe when, if they need any other kind of medicine. So even if your piggies don't need heart medicine right now, it's a great idea to give them the vitamin C. And then if they ever did need heart medicine or antibiotics or whatever, they're accustomed to the syringe. Same thing if you ever need to give them critical care or emergency food, they know how to take food from a syringe. And you can also mix the vitamin C into other medicines like antibiotics. And it's just a really good idea to have, it's a little bottle, it's not that expensive, you know, it's like around $10 or so more or less. And it's just such an easy thing with such a huge impact on their health that you know of all the things that you can do for your piggies giving them vitamin c every day is one really big one that has a really positive impact so i highly recommend doing that and let me know in the comments if you've had uh, a good um experience with giving your piggies vitamin c i'd love to hear about it and some piggies don't like the vitamin C liquid, as I said. If your piggy doesn't like the vitamin C liquid, the vitamin C cookies are a great way for them to get the vitamin C. And of course, things like uh, green pepper, bell peppers, and oranges, and there's a whole list of vitamin C rich veggies. But like I said, you can't always guarantee how much vitamin C are in these foods or if they're gonna eat enough to get the adequate amount. So just making sure that you give them uh, a dose of the vitamin C, whether it's the cookie or the liquid, you're guaranteeing to give them that 50 milligrams that they need every day. So I know that this video was a little bit long, but it's really important information that I just wanted to make sure was out there, was on my channel. I really encourage you to take a look at this information sheet from the Exotic Animal Care Center. Maybe follow them on social media or just take a note of their website if you ever need to reference it or recommend it to your vet in your area. So I hope you found this video helpful. I know there's a lot of questions out there about heart disease and there's not too much information. Now, this information is out there, but 
maybe not all of my viewers have seen it or have access to it so I thought it was important that I put this out there put this on my website so that you guys have this information and that it was explained by somebody who's gone through it as I've mentioned you know I have two piggies on heart medicine and it's not the end of the world you know I've got another video where I talk about um, how it sucks when your piggies are diagnosed with an illness but you will find that your piggies that are sick or your piggies that you have to give daily medicine to you develop such a strong bond with them and you know if you can sit and watch Netflix with your piggies you know and you find that time valuable and enjoyable well it's the same thing if you have to you know care for them whether it's uh, soaking their bumble foot or whether it's just giving them medicine it doesn't take that long really every day to just give them a squirt of medicine it's something easy to do but the the difference that it makes you know well when it comes to heart disease it will save their life but it doesn't take that long to do something that really helps them and increases your bond and those are the pigs the pigs that you are taking care of that they need you you know it's not just what your piggies will do for you as far as being cute and entertaining or whatever but it's what we can do for them you know my piggies are rescues and fosters they come uh you know either from the la guinea pig rescue or they're waiting to go there or they were foster fails or whatever the situation is they need me to take care of them and i'm happy to do it and the bonds that we formed you know, by taking care of them, it's something that I wouldn't trade for the world. So thank you guys so much for letting me uh, share this, you know, with you and, and also for empowering me to um, be able to take care of these animals and to help you all around the world take care of your pets and your piggies and, and foster that love and caring and to raise awareness for these piggies. It is a privilege and I appreciate it so much. That reminds me about Patron, Patreon. If you wanted to help me do this, you know, on a monthly basis, if you wanted to uh, help my efforts, I do have a, I'll put a link down there in the description to Patreon, and that is a way that you can uh, help me, and you can check out all of the different levels of uh, rewards that I have, such as exclusive, uh, exclusive live streams, exclusive videos that you're not going to see on this channel. There's a, a whole exclusive feed where I post all sorts of things, and you know, it's just a way for me to say thank you, to get to know you guys better on an individual level, and. Um, it's, we're actually having a lot of fun over there. So I hope you'll at least consider checking out the, the Patreon because uh, uh, at least the feedback that I've gotten from the people, I've got people that have been patrons on Patreon for a number of years now. And, and it just, it warms my heart. I wanna say thank you guys. Thank you so much to my patrons. And you know, I'll see you guys over there. So thank you so much for watching. <laughs> no, it was a long one, but thanks for hanging in there. Until next time.